niche, niche, niche. Why is choosing a niche so hard? Most likely because you probably don't actually know what it is. You need a working definition. You need to define a niche so you can pick one, meaning you need not the textbook definition from the dictionary, a comfortable or suitable, suitable position in life or employment, but there is a similar word here that might help you, and that would be calling, a calling, a reason for you, something that you have found that you want to explore and help other people with and take note of that help other people. But also take note of this, a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. Now, when we're talking about specifically picking a niche to make money and talking about making money online, as I do here on the channel, that probably is a better definition, but a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service, now you're thinking about a product or service and you are looking at segments of a market and that's not really where your focus should be. Now, there is also this definition, a shallow recess, especially one in a wall to display a statue or an ornament. Each niche held a shepherdess in a Dresden, China, a nook or a cranny. This definition also works for our purposes because you're looking for a nook or a cranny. A nook or a cranny is a small space where something fits. All right. So take all those things and we're going to come back to this in a second. But understand, I like to use ChatGPT because AI is supposed to make our life easier. Right. So why is choosing a niche so hard? Choosing a niche can be challenging can be a challenging task for several reasons. Passion versus profit. People often want to choose a niche they are passionate about because it keeps them motivated. Well, motivation is fleeting. You need discipline. But profit, however, a niche that aligns with their passion may not always be profitable. And I would say that's true, but typically that's not going to be the case unless you're going to niche, meaning that you've found that nook or that cranny, that small space that group of people that have a problem, which we're going to define here in a second a little further. But if you're thinking that you're not going to find a niche that aligns with your passion because it may not be profitable, typically if you enjoy something, if you have a hobby or you have a problem, then there's enough people out there that do have a problem. Unless you're talking about one-eyed Greek grandmas in a small town in Iowa, that might limit your ability if you niche down that far. So let's go back and look at this list from ChatGPT when we ask ChatGPT to help us or ask us to ask the question to ChatGPT, why is choosing a niche so hard? Passion versus profit. I really wouldn't worry about that one. And this one, market research and competition, just scroll past that one. But this broad versus narrow focus, these are some things to think about. But even this one is probably better. Fear of commitment. Long-term commitment. Choosing a niche often feels like a long-term commitment and people fear making the wrong choice. Yes, you are not going to make the wrong choice because making a choice is the right move. Making a choice, picking a niche, is the only way to go forward. So flexibility, concerns about whether the niche allows for growth or flex flexibility in content and business strategies. Again, don't overthink this. Don't go too far down like we talked about. You're not looking for something that there literally is only one person or two people on the planet that show up to the meetings or are even interested in the idea or the concept. But again, that's typically not going to be the case for us. Knowledge and expertise, expert expertise, lack knowledge or experience and potential niche can make most people hesitant. So lacking knowledge, the learning curve associated with gaining experience can be steep and intimidating. Yeah, of course. If you're picking something that you are interested in or you think you're interested in and there's a huge learning curve, like you want to create a YouTube channel about going to Mars, that's going to be a little difficult to actually go to Mars, to actually find someone with experience or to have your own personal experience of actually going to Mars. But again, try not to overthink this. Trends and sustainability, you know, again, we're looking at, you know, something that's trending, you know, looking at saying, a niche or a market segment, you know, we talk about entertainment or fads like fidget spinners, because that's not a niche, right? But entertainment or the purpose of a fidget spinner is probably a niche because people have a problem 
They needed something to do with their hands, right? So you look into these segments and you start thinking about it. Personal identity and branding. Again, you don't need to worry about this at this level. And feedback and validation. Again, these are all high level marketing concepts that were written in a book somewhere. You don't need to worry about these. You need a working definition and make this a lot simpler. There are some strategies here that are quite helpful from ChatGPT. And down here it says, choosing a niche is a crucial or a critical decision, but with careful consideration and strategic planning, it can lead to successful and fulfilling ventures. And I agree. And ChatGPT was actually helpful, but I think if we go back to these textbook definitions, this dictionary definition from Google, and we utilize one of the definitions here that you might not have thought of or you might have passed over is the ecology definition, a position or role taken by a particular kind of organism within its community. Such a position may be occupied by different organisms in different localities. For example, antelopes in Africa and kangaroos in Australia. Stop right here with me and let's frame this. Antelopes in Africa and kangaroos in Australia. What problems do they have in common? What problems do they have in common? Antelopes in Africa and kangaroos in Australia, they both need food, they both need water. Typically, you're not going to pick a niche that's going to address those type of issues, the fact that basic necessities, food and water. Now, let's pull this back and be a little silly about this, but I think the silliness is going to drive home how to actually help you determine what a niche is and move forward. And I'm also going to show you a way to get rid of the word niche altogether and just look at it by simply solving a problem. And when we're thinking about problems, antelopes in Africa and kangaroos in Australia, we talked about what similar problems they have. What very different problems do they have? Let's look at the way antelopes and kangaroos raise their children. Antelopes, they have a baby antelope. I don't know what it's called. And the baby antelope comes out, it hits the ground, it stands up and it takes off running. A kangaroo, on the other hand, has a pouch. So when it has a, I believe it's called a joey or a kid. Anyway, when a baby kangaroo is born, the mother has to put it in a pouch. An antelope, no matter if it's in Africa or Australia or a kangaroo, no matter where it is in the world, it has the problem of taking care or maintaining its pouch. You understand? So you could look at that and you could say, okay, a kangaroo has a very specific problem that I can address. How many kangaroos are there in the world? There's, I don't know, a million kangaroos in the world or a hundred thousand kangaroos in Australia. They're all interested in my product, my service, my videos that I'm going to create here on YouTube about how to maintain a healthy pouch and a healthy baby inside of their pouch. And at that point you have, even though it's a silly example, you have a real working definition of what you're trying to do. You're trying to solve a problem. And let me back up. So now you have a working definition of a niche, a problem that a group of people have that you have the solution for or you want to solve for them. That is a niche. That is your working definition. Now what I want to do for you is I want to show you my proven top strategy of traffic, offer, and people, the three pillars of building a profitable online business. And I get rid of the word niche and I exchange it for topic. And topic is simply a problem, how to solve something, how you are going to help people solve a problem that they have. Typically, we're going to say, how do I or how to do something, how to solve a problem or a person like that kangaroo, how do I keep my pouch clean for my brand new baby? That is your topic inside of affiliating and that is your niche. Again, I teach this inside of my affiliating course and I talk about topic and I talk about picking a topic we talk about markets and we already looked at the definitions of market segments and all that. And yeah, you need to understand that at a high level. It's important to learn, but understand that a niche, like I say here, a targeted group of people that have a problem and what we're going to do inside of a niche, we're going to pick a topic based on answering a how to question. Let's take a look at a real example over at YouTube. How do I, how do I say goodbye to Dean Lewis? How do I say goodbye? How do I live without you? How do I breathe Mario? How do I look yellow man? How do I live? without Le you, Leon Rhymes. But what you can do is you can start the alphabet method. How do I ask a boy out? How do I apologize and put tears back in your eyes? Some of this stuff is going to be popular things that are going on, but some of these things, if you move through the alphabet, how do I delete my Facebook account? How do I deactivate my Facebook account? How do I delete my Instagram account? 
How do I deactivate my Instagram account? There you can start seeing that people have a problem around social media, and that's going to help you pick your topic. Then at that point, because now we have a working definition of a niche, those kangaroos that have a problem with their pouch and they want to keep their pouch clean, we're going to create content around that. But a more realistic idea was that idea, that concept we used over at YouTube to find a problem, how to solve, how to do something, how do I delete or deactivate my Instagram, my Facebook account, or how do I create a Facebook account, all things around social media. If that interests you, then you go over and you start creating a list and you write that one down as your first topic or the problem you're going to help people solve. Then you write down another topic. It could be anything again. You could go back and you could say, okay, I don't want to talk about social media. How do I raise tomatoes in a small apartment in the city? And you write that topic down. Then you write down another topic and this topic could be anything. How do I do cross stitching as a left-handed person that likes to travel? Again, that may be niched down too far, but you understand these are the topics that you know about. These are the topics that you understand. These are the topics that you might want to learn more about. And then all you do is you simply cross out the two that you think that you can't talk about for the next five years. Yes, the next five years, you put that into your mind and you say, I'm going to focus on this topic, on this problem. I'm going to address this problem every day for the next five years, finding a group of people that have this problem and I can help them solve it. And you're going to cross that out and that's going to be the topic or that's going to be your niche. So now let's go back to chat GPT because again, AI is supposed to be helping us, right? And we talked about why it's choosing a niche so hard. It gave us a lot of information, but it really kind of clouded the waters for us as well. But we're narrowing that down. So what I did now is because we understand we're picking a topic, let's call it a topic and choose from three choices. Will that make it easier? Again, based on we are creating simple how-to content to solve problems. Yes, narrowing it down to three choices can certainly make the process more manageable. Also, do this for yourself. Open up ChatGPT and go through this exercise. Don't just watch the video and be like, oh, that's a good idea. I'll definitely do that. Do this. Go through this exercise with me in this video. Yes, narrowing it down to three choices can certainly make the process more manageable. Here's a structured approach to help you choose from your three options. List three topic choices. Start by clearly defining the three topics you are considering. Just like we did earlier, just like I showed you, evaluate the topic, interest and passion. Don't worry about market demand. Don't worry about competition, experts, expertise and knowledge. This is a good one to land on because you need to ask yourself and you need to be realistic. How knowledgeable am I about this topic? Will you need to invest time in learning more about it? And this falls under my LDT model of learn to teach inside of my proven top strategy where you either learn more about a topic that you already know, or you are learning about a brand new topic. You go out and you do that topic, and then you come back and you teach that topic specifically here on YouTube. And then you say, okay, let me be realistic about my current expertise and knowledge and the fact of over the next five years, how much time do I have to devote to learning more about this on my way to become an expert? Because you don't need to be an expert right now. You're just going to start where you're at. Potential profit, don't worry about it. Long-term sustainability, is the topic a fad? Yeah, well, if it's a fad, fidget spinners, you probably may not even know what that is at this point when you're watching this video, but that was a fad. There's lots of fads. Will the interest in this topic likely continue in the future for both the audience that is out there and for you? More importantly, for you, will the interest in this topic likely continue for you in the future? And that goes into sustainability. Then ChatGPT did create a nice little matrix here to do some scoring to allow you to help you make a decision. But again, don't worry about market demand and competition, you know, profit potential. Don't worry about those aspects because that's just going to muddy the waters and you're never, ever going to make a decision. You're never, ever going to pick a topic. Test the top choice. Yeah, well, you know, you could do this by testing and creating content and find out, well, maybe it's really hard to create content about this because of the way that I need to set up a camera and actually, if I'm doing cross stitch, show me actually doing the thing, the cross stitch versus maybe just sharing information on the topic in a screen share, like the videos that I make where I share the screen on my computer. I don't really have to change up a lot of things. I could just talk to you in my camera that's always in the same position and just record my screen. So those are the kind of things that I would test. I wouldn't really worry too much about trying to do market research 
Again, that's just going to put you in a phase of, a, of paralysis during your analysis phase. And it's a real thing. Paralysis during analysis, just pick a topic. But it did give you three examples here of topics, which are pretty good. Of course, you need to drill down a little further and you need to say, okay, health and wellness, technology and gadgets, travel and adventure. But you need to pick a how-to question like we did when I said, how do I, how do I travel? And here you're going to see, how do I travel the world to Canada? How do I travel with a, you're going to see more options. How do I travel with a calorie deficient? Or how do I go on a calorie deficient? That's probably a diet. How do I travel in a tuk-tuk? How do I travel with my dog in a plane? I think you see how you can actually take this down, the path that you need to go down to find a very specific topic. And then also remember that, yes, you need to keep it broad enough. You don't know, need to go too specific because how far can I travel in a tuk-tuk? I don't think you're going to make a whole YouTube channel about that or make a whole business about that online, but I could be wrong. And because we're using ChatGPT, we'll go back here and we can see their score and we can see the structured approach that it gave us. What's a real actual way to look at what other people are doing that we might be interested in? What you can do is you could go, for example, to my channel, 30 Minute Marketing, and you could simply just copy all of the titles here from all of these YouTube videos. You could take it over to ChatGPT and you could put in this prompt right here. With the working definition of a niche being a group of people with a similar problem looking for a solution, tell me what niche this YouTube channel is in based on the titles of the YouTube videos. And you can see here, I just literally pasted in all of the all of the YouTube videos from that channel, and it's going to tell me. Based on the titles of the YouTube videos provided, the niche of this YouTube channel is focused on making money online and digital entrepreneurship. This channel targets individuals looking for various ways to generate income through online method tools platforms. The content includes practical advice, reviews, tutorials, and demonstrations related to, and then there's a list of topics. Now, the reason that I have all these topics is because I've been doing this for seven years. You need to pick one of these. So here's what you could do. Go ahead and say, give me three topics to pick from the list of the five and break them down into the three how-to videos I could make for each. And this is drilling down into a topic and saying, these are the types of videos that I could make. Affiliate marketing for beginners, how to choose the right affiliate program. Then your topic for your channel, which I cover this, affiliate marketing for beginners, you could make an entire YouTube channel starting today on doing affiliate marketing for beginners. And you can see it's creating the videos for you. And those videos all apply for affiliate marketers for beginners. And you could talk about that for the next five years, no problem. Topic two, selling digital products on Gumroad. You could talk about that for the next five years and you could follow the LDT model. You could learn. If you don't already know how to do it, you could learn how to do it. You could actually do it and you could teach what happened, both your success and your failures, and you could help that group of people, your niche, you could help that group of people that are beginners as affiliate marketers. And it doesn't really matter at that point whether they're antelopes in Africa or kangaroos in Australia. They're people all around the world that are looking to learn how to become an affiliate marketer and they are a complete beginner. And you can help them because you're going to learn. You're going to have your own experiences that you're going to share as you do it, and you're going to teach them exactly how you do how you do it, how you did it, your failures and your successes, and that's going to be your audience that you're going to take forward. That is your niche. And Chad GPT provided us a lot of great information, but we're going to go back and we're going to put that prompt in again with the working definition of a niche being a group of people with a similar problem looking for a solution. Tell me what niche this YouTube channel is in based on the titles of the videos. And what we're going to do is we're going to go find another channel. This is WP Toots, Toots, right? Tutorials. I think you know already, but let's go through the exercise. And again, you should be doing this with me. This isn't just me doing it so you can watch me do it. This is you actually picking a niche, going through this exercise. And of course, find channels that you're interested in and do this same exercise. And you can see, I just copied and pasted that in there, utilizing that prompt, setting the context, asking a question of ChatGPT. And it's going to come back and it's going to say, Based on the titles of the YouTube videos provided, the niche of this YouTube channel is web designers and developers looking to improve their skills and efficiency using WordPress and related tools. Now you understand. You have found your kangaroos. You have found your antelopes. It is breaking down the niche, target audience, common problems, solutions offered, sample video breakdown, how to choose the best plugins for your WordPress site. 
What is the topic? Mastering WordPress plugins. How to install configured essential WordPress plugins. Advanced tips for op optimizing performance or optimizing plugin performance. Building and customizing WordPress websites. How to create a dynamic WordPress website with Bricks Builder. Bricks Builder. These are the antelopes that use Brick Builder. These are the kangaroos that use Brick Builder. These are the people that are looking specifically for this as beginners about getting started with WordPress. These are the topics that you're listing. These three topics, and to round this off, I'm going to show you one more, which is an enormous YouTube channel. MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee. He does tech videos. So what you can do with this, and this probably is going to be a little more even broad, but it's going to show you the power of understanding that you don't have to just sit and stare at the screen. You don't have to just sit and stare and think, oh my goodness, what is the niche? You come here, you copy all of his YouTube titles from his YouTube channel. And now you come back to ChatGPT and you say, now do this channel and tell me the niche. And you paste in all those titles and you let AI actually help you. You let ChatGPT help you. Yes, it can be overwhelming. Yes, it can give you lots of information that send you down a path, a rabbit hole. But understand, based on the titles of the YouTube videos provided, this niche of this YouTube channel is tech enthusiasts and consumers looking for in-depth reviews, insights, and news on the latest technology and gadget. Tech enthusiasts and consumers. Where antelopes and kangaroos come together, they're both interested in gadgets. They're both interested in tech. They're looking for in-depth reviews, insights, news on the latest technology and gadgets. And here is the niche breakdown. Here is the common problems, the solution, the different videos, and why you are making them. And at that point, all you have to do is pick your niche based upon what we have defined a niche actually is. A group of people with a similar problem that you have the solution for. Go out, list your topics, simply the problems that you want to solve. How do I solve this problem? How to solve this problem? Enter that problem right there. Enter the problem that the antelopes have. Enter the problems that the kangaroos have. Do the overlap. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. That is your niche. Just that quick, just that simple.